What makes some sand dunes sing? Dunes form when sand, carried by the wind, pile up on a large scale. Certain sand dunes produce a distinct, low-frequency rumble defined as singing, humming, or booming. What makes them special is that these sounds resemble the musical notes of a cello or the droning sound of an aircraft. Il y a un son d'avalanche. These songs can last for minutes and can be heard up to 10 kilometers away. Sand dunes are not stable structures. They consist of a rigid inner layer of closely packed sand topped by a layer of loose sand that can be around 1 to 2 meters thick. A typical sand dune can only rise to a certain height and slope. When it exceeds that limit, the sand begins to slide down the dune, resulting in an avalanche. These avalanches trigger the natural booming of dunes. During an avalanche, the uniformly sized sand grains rub against each other. This shearing of grains produces frictional energy, similar to the bows of the violin. Also, when the sand slides down from a height, the potential energy of the sand gets converted to kinetic energy. The energy from the avalanche makes even more sand particles vibrate, so the frictional and kinetic energy gets converted into vibrational energy within the sand. This results in the generation of short pulses of sound called burps. How is Colonel Sanders able to rise to fame as a fried chicken magnate? Everyone's favorite chicken mascot used to be a real guy, and yes, he did serve in the US military, only he wasn't a colonel. He was an enlisted teamster who lied about his age to join at 16. After a year in Cuba, he returned home and was discharged. He opened a shell station in North Corbin, Kentucky. This is where he first started serving food to hungry travelers and locals. But he found competition in the oil business could be a little bit aggressive. A competing gas owner named Matt Stewart ran the local Standard Oil Station in North Corbin. As a business tactic, he would paint over Sanders' shell oil sign that told motorists where to find the station. He repeatedly warned Stewart to stop until one day Sanders caught his competition in the act. But when Sanders approached Stewart that day, accompanied by two Shell Oil managers, it was Stewart who opened fire on Sanders. Stewart killed one of the managers while Sanders retrieved the dead man's gun. Sanders and the remaining manager returned fire, wounding Stewart. When the dust settled, Stewart would survive getting shot by Sanders, but he was on his way to prison for murder. Sanders, acting in self-defense, was not charged. With his competition eliminated, Sanders' business could thrive. Why do baby deer have spots? The flex effectively camouflage a fawn by mimicking patches of sunlight that shine through trees and other plants, landing unevenly across the already varied, neutral hues on the forest floor. Without the strength or size needed to outrun a predator, a newborn fawn's best bet for survival is to simply blend in with the scenery. When you see a fawn curled up among the foliage, Without a chaperone in sight, it's hard to imagine a more vulnerable creature, but that solitude is actually another protection strategy. For the first few weeks of a fawn's life, its mother generally only reappears to feed it or lead it to a new shelter, because mature deer are easier to see and smell than their offspring. A doe's absence helps mitigate the risk of drawing a predator straight to her baby. Once a fawn is capable of fleeing danger as fast as its mother, they start spending more time together.